This month on Our Land, we talk about the Rio Grande, what's happening this year, but into the future as scientists learn more and more about what will happen to the river and its reservoirs and the rest of us who rely upon this water as temperatures keep rising and we keep having difficult conditions. The impacts of climate change don't just reflect one dry year or one bad season. They intensify one another. They build on one another. We see this in our forests, our rivers, all across the state. One place where it's plain to see how warming plays out in our arid state. Elephant Butte Reservoir in southern New Mexico. It's sad to say that right now we're at about 9% capacity. This, this reservoir can hold over 2,200,000 acre feet of water. And in my tenure with the district, I've seen it spill over the dam. And I've seen it is lower than it is right now. So it's an unfortunate thing. But when you're in the west, um, droughts happen, and we're in a mega drought right now, decadal drought. Gary Esslinger started working here in 1978 for the Elephant Butte Irrigation District. Today, he's treasurer and manager responsible for bringing water to more than 90,000 acres of pecans, alfalfa, chili, onions, and even cotton through Hatch and down to the Mesilla Valley. Last fall, the district told farmers not to expect much water from this reservoir on the Rio Grande. They're anticipating that this could be the worst season in memory. Most of the farmers in this valley are pretty familiar with where we're located right now, and they come up here and they can see the same thing. So it's not any news to them that we are short of surface water. We've been short for, you know, going on 20 some odd years. To survive, farmers have to adapt. They pump groundwater or they fallow fields to use what water is available for higher value crops. I'd hate to see it go away. I hate to see agriculture just d diminish, especially here because it's, it's a great part of this valley. From, from here all the way down to, to El Paso, it flourishes and, and you think about it and um, it's got a great economic benefit to this entire state. Like many dams across the West, Elephant Butte was built by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. Dagmar Llewellyn is a hydrologist with the agency. But now we do it in a more... What Reclamation did from the beginning and is, is charged with is taking what can be a, an inhospitable landscape for human activities and finding ways to make it so that we can thrive here, right? That's what we did in the past by building dams. That was the, the action that we thought was needed at that time. The agency has evolved though. And I believe that the programs that I work on under the Secure Water Act are what enable us to do the same thing now, which is to try to find ways to take what's becoming a more and more challenging and inhospitable landscape for a lot of human activities and find ways to make them possible and to allow us to continue to thrive here. Our lives have certainly changed since the early 20th century when Elephant Butte Dam was built. And as we've pumped more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, we've warmed the climate. There is no new normal. We talk about what is the flow of this river relative to the average, to the normal? But the challenge of climate change is that we're losing the whole concept of normal. For centuries, farmers relied upon the Rio Grande as a snowmelt driven system. The water you see here predominantly originates in the mountains of Colorado and northern New Mexico. And it builds up over the course of the winter as it snows into a snowpack, and that's the primary place where we actually store our water. Some moisture would seep into the forests. Some would melt through the spring when farmers need it to sustain crops until the summer monsoons. But as arid places like New Mexico warm, 
they also dry. So think about how your hair dryer works, right? You, you heat things up so that you get the moisture to go into the air. It comes out of our soils, it comes out of our tree roots, it comes out of, and everything that uses water, our riparian systems, our crops, everything all the way down needs more water be, just because it's warmer, just because of the way your hair dryer works. Esslinger is an optimist. In his time here, he has seen droughts and floods, and he has faith. We have to trust mankind and trust our, our future to those who will come in here and see new innovative ways to, to help um, deal with the situations, whether it's a drought situation or flood. I mean, my God, if, if we had a flood event here, and I've seen those, I've seen hatch underwater, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's as terrible to, a sight to see as, as this empty lake. Elephant Butte's low levels don't just cause problems for farmers here. Under the Rio Grande Compact, until those levels come up and New Mexico can send the water it owes to downstream users, we can't store water in some upstream reservoirs either. And these problems won't disappear anytime soon. And we have a river that's highly variable in its flows both within the year and between years, and it's just gonna get more variable. So everything, they call it intensification of the water cycle. Everything is just happening more so. The climate of the past that we all came to rely upon no longer offers a map for the future. And the better we understand that, accept that, the better we can know how to face that future. For Our Land and New Mexico in Focus, I'm Laura Pascas.